Uh, my name is Jo Cowan. I am the person who puts together our um, on-site education program here, which of course right now has been temporarily suspended. We are part of the School of Veterinary Medicine, but a very small part uh, uh, here at UC Davis. And we're a very small part, and so we are very much dependent on donations from the public and the fees that the education programs bring in to help this place keep going. And unfortunately, right now, we don't have the education programs have been totally suspended and we don't have any visitors because we are closed. But what we do at our open houses, we have the presentations, um, two of them, are, uh, one at 10 o'clock, one at 12 o'clock, and at both of those, one of the first things we do is exactly make sure that the audience understands exactly what is a raptor. So, raptors are predatory birds, and they are the only predatory birds that can catch and kill their food with their feet. Now, this is the bottom part of the leg, the lower part of the leg, of a golden eagle. And you can see the three big toes out the front here and the big halux at the back with these massive, strong talons on the end of the toes. These, the talons are extremely hard and very, very strong. But what makes a raptor different from the other predatory birds is that they are the only ones that can catch and kill their food with their feet. All the other ones have to use their beaks. But not only are these talons incredibly sharp and strong, but the muscles in the legs and the toes are incredibly powerful. And it is the squeeze that these birds can exert that allows them to kill their prey. Now, all the raptors do have the top part of the beak in a downwards hook here. This is the top part of the skull, the maxillary part of the skull of a bald eagle. And you can see the massive beak here coming down into a sharp point. They use these beaks to rip up the food that they have just killed, rip up the prey. Now, even a turkey vulture is considered to be a raptor. They have very strong feet and strong talons, but what they are lacking is the squeeze. So they can't kill their food. They have to eat the stuff that is already dead. So they are scavengers. They do have the downward pointing beak that they can rip that food up with, just like the other raptors do, but they cannot actually kill because they don't have the squeeze. Okay. At this point, I'm going to turn it over to my colleague, Lise, who is going to talk about the raptors that we have around us uh, that you can see if you are out in the countryside or even right in your own back garden. Uh, you can see raptors up in the sky quite frequently, and she's going to go over some of those uh, uh, right now and help you identify them. When I get a t give a talk to the younger children, I tell them there are three simple rules for being able to see raptors. One is stop, the other is look, and the other is listen. So if you stop or you're not rushing around, you can see these birds a lot better. If you look with your binoculars or your eyes and not at your texts, then you'll be able to see the birds better. And if you listen and take out your earbuds, you'll be able to hear nature and the birds calling. Those are the ways that you will be able to see the raptors in your area. Now we have nocturnal raptors that are out in the daytime, at nighttime, and these are the owls. They are harder to see because it's nighttime and they're very silent in their flight. So often you'll be able to hear them before you even see them. One of the biggest ones here, I'm gonna go and get this one here, is the great horned owl. These are the ones that hoot 
You will find them near trees or in trees and uh, where they have their nests. And if you look at the ground, you might see pellets, owl pellets, from where they've been roosting. At this time of the year, you might not hear them hooting, but you will probably see the young ones on the ground, not yet ready to fly. So you need to stand back and let the parents take care of them. The next nocturnal in the darker part of the night owl that we have is the barn owl. And it is a very silent flyer as are all the other owls. And you can find them just about anywhere, but they have nest boxes, they are in uh, abandoned buildings, sometimes even in palm trees. So you'll see them around if you're lucky enough to be watching when they're just a white bird silently floating over the sky. These are the birds that don't hoot. So listen for them to screech because that's what they do. And that's a way to find them locally. Another owl that's a bit hard to see, but if you're in an oak woodland in a park or somewhere, there's a little western screech owl. And guess what? It does not screech. It has a soft little hoot 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 sound. And they live in holes in trees. And sometimes if you're lucky, you might see them peeking out of their holes. And if you see them flying, you're really lucky. They'll be out trying to catch moths. And if you can't see any of those, you might look for piles of moth wings on the ground because they spit out the wings and eat the juicy moth bodies. It's a little burrowing owl. They live underground in tunnels that are made by ground squirrels. And there are very few of them left. They live in colonies. And if you're around an Air Force base, somebody is driving you around, you might see them at the edges by the undisturbed uh, fence lines where they can still find a place to uh, have their burrows and to uh, catch the food that they need. The, uh, sometimes you can see them sitting on a fence post and the one on the fence post is the lookout. It's looking for danger so it can warn the other owls that maybe a coyote is coming or you are there, scary. <laughs> So those are some of our owls. Certainly they're not the only ones. Um, so let's move on to the daytime birds, which are called diurnal birds. And we have quite a lot of them. And we can start with um, the Swainson's hawk, which is back now from, our, from southern Mexico. And you can see them in the sky and you can certainly hear them. And they like to nest in big trees, even in your neighborhood, and out in the farmlands as well. You can see these birds soaring around, and you can also hear their call, which is a really high-pitched call. And very often, you might hear a lot of noise in the sky as they're screaming, and crows are calling because the crows chase them around and harass them. But the Swainson's hawks persevere and they have their young here and in the September they get ready to fly back to Mexico. The, uh, another bird that we have in our area, right in your neighborhood very often, are Cooper's hawks. This, they are bird catching hawks, they live in trees. This is an adult bird. This is a juvenile bird. So you can see that they change their feathers from when they're young to when they're older. And they even change their eye colors from yellow to ruby red as they get older. So these are interesting birds to watch. You can see the young practicing their flying in tree branches uh, right near where you live. A, another bird that you may see out uh, near water, in trees near water, would be the red-shouldered hawk. I don't have one here, but they're very noisy birds, and they really let you know, here I am, because when you hear them calling, there's no mistaking them. Um, other birds, I have this big list here, <laughs> would be the red-tailed hawks, which are here year-round, but mostly in the winter. You can see them sitting on top of um, 
utility poles and they're looking on the ground for things to catch, like squirrels, for example. Then, if uh, they're in our area, you might be able to see the um, white-tailed kites, and they hover in place, and they're looking for bowls on the ground, and when they see a mouse that they could catch, they kite their wings up like this, and they go feet first to the ground to catch that mouse, and then they're up somewhere eating it, and then they're out fluttering around looking for the next one. One of the really interesting little colorful birds that we have is the smallest of our falcons. This is called an American kestrel. This is the male and this is the female. So they have different colors. And you can see them out in the farmlands around along sides of the roads. And you'll be sitting up on the telephone wires, utility wires, and they're looking down into ditches for things to catch, like crickets and reptiles and little mice. And when they're up on the wires, they're looking down, and so they have to make sure that they keep their balance so you can see those tails go up and down. Uh, and that's another way to identify them. Now we also have, if you're out driving in the, in the fields, um, open fields, we have northern harriers. And they nest on the ground, and the female can't be seen because she's at the nest, and she's chocolate brown. But this is the male and they fly low to the ground looking for prey to catch so they can feed their families that are nesting on the ground. So these are very low to the ground flyers that you might see. Now, we have bigger birds um, that I don't have here, but we have fishing raptors like the osprey and you can see them near lakes and streams. We also have golden eagles if you're driving in the country. Another big eagle in our area is the bald eagle. They're usually here in the winter, but recently they have started staying here uh, during the summer, during the breeding season. So you can see them, they're nesting near lakes like Lake Berryessa and Lake Tahoe and such places. Now, last but definitely not least, we want to mention the turkey vulture, which Joe has already mentioned, the carrion eater. And when you look at this big dark bird in the sky, it'll be a dark bird, but you'll see a halo of silver feathers are, are from the wings and the tails. So it's almost like, like they have a halo up there as you see them flying with their wings in the dihedral. You can also see them roosting in trees with their wings out, toasting in the sunshine. They soar on thermals, so they don't have to use a lot of energy. Um, and um, so you can even see them uh, on the roadside or road eating something that got killed by a car. So please be careful. We don't want to run over our cleanup crew of the environment, okay? Now, so we invite you to get your binoculars, get your guide to Northern, to Northern California birds, Go out there, stop, look, and listen, and enjoy seeing our raptors. <laughs>